Assalamu alaikum and welcome to this video about less and array comprehensions. This video will rather be a short one because we will not be covering any theoretical concepts. However, we will cover a cool syntax called list comprehension. Let me show you an example of that in action and you will grasp why it's useful. Let's say we want to multiply all the numbers in a list by 2, or in other words, we want to double them. We have two ways actually of doing that, either by going through the list recursively and multiply each of the numbers by 2, or by using list comprehension. Here we go. This is the recursive way of iterating through the list and multiplying each of the numbers by 2. It's quite cumbersome to write all that just to double the numbers in the list. Fortunately, we can use list comprehension to go through the numbers in a list in one line of code. Check this out. This outputs the exact same result. So, instead of writing all this junk recursive function, we can just do it in one line. We can iterate through the elements one by one, change the element, or even get rid of it. Check this out. Let's say I want to get rid of the 2, so I want the output to be 1 and 3. Let me paste this here quickly and run it. We just removed the 2 in one line, almost zero effort. Now that you know why it's so powerful, let's quickly explain how it's actually written. First, we start by the braces, and inside the braces, there are three main areas separated by these symbols. In area 2, we define a variable which will represent the numbers individually of the list. So, each of the list numbers will be passed to that variable one at a time. However, in the first area, we change the variable, manipulate it, or return it as it is. So, in the first example, we doubled it, and in the second one, we just returned it as it is without changing it. In area 3, we just say if we need that variable or not. Area 3 is called the filter of the list because, as you see, it just gets rid of the undesired elements. One last thing, area 3 is optional. This is the most basic form of a list comprehension. Now let's actually try to remove the 2 and then double all the other numbers. So again, a will be representing each of the list elements individually. We keep the number if it's not equal to 2, then we finally double it. List comprehension can be applied to any list type. Let it be characters, a list of numbers, a list of apples, anything. Just make sure that the operations inside the comprehension itself are valid for that type. List comprehensions can be even more complicated. Check this out. Nested list comprehension. We're not done. Even this one. Okay, a step back and let's investigate what's happening. When we put a comma, each of the elements in the first list will be paired with every single element in the second list. One with A, one with B, one with C, two with A, two with B, two with C, etc. However, when we change the comma to an ampersand, each element from the first list will be paired to its corresponding element in the second list uh, based on that same exact position. So, one with A, two with B, three with C, etc. With that said and covered, now you know what's a list comprehension, how it's working, some advanced implementations such as nested iterations of elements, and why it's useful. Now let's quickly go over array comprehensions, as it's exactly the same as list comprehensions, but with two minor differences. First of all, you must change the shape of the arrow when dealing with incoming arrays. So, in this example we have R, and R is an array, and for that we must change the shape of the arrow and add the columns at the end. The second thing is that, if you want the output of the comprehension to also be an array, change the surrounding braces to curly braces as in this example. And the rest is history. Note that there will be errors if we write the code directly to the start like this. So putting the array comprehension in a new function removes the weird problem and we're happy. Remember that the start can't handle arrays directly without help. And this wraps it for this video. I hope it was useful. In the next video, we'll be tackling down a new data structure in clean called tuples. Stay tuned and salam.